don't know what's going on with me and Shambo. When I got sent over to the other tribe, Dave handed her my canteen. I didn't care, but when I came back to camp, I said, where is it? And then she makes this huge big deal and then all of a sudden brings up all these other things that I have no idea what she's even talking about. There's some like little power struggle going on between you and I. And I don't, I don't get it. I don't understand it. I don't like it. Now, how you perceive that, if your feelings get hurt and if you're like, well, what's her problem? Well, that's on you. It wasn't a fight about canteens. It really is the way that she treats me on a regular basis. It's almost like those popular girls in high school that are cheerleaders that want to snob their nose at people that don't fit into their circle. I'm done with her. I have no use for her. None. You have a way of turning things about. So like, now I look like the bad person. Like I blew this whole thing up. Like, where's my canteen? Where's my canteen? What is this about the canteen? They're totally arguing over nothing. Absolutely nothing. To be honest, we know Shambo's crazy. So if you get in a fight with Shambo, who's the one that looks bad? You look bad. If you fight with Shambo, that means you're just as crazy as her, only you're not really crazy. You're just being a bitch. Every season of Survivor is a story. There are main characters, sidekicks, comic reliefs, and villains. But today's story will be focusing on the most petty yet funny rivalry in all of Survivor Samoa, the military veteran Shambo versus the popular girl, Laura. By the way, if you've already seen their individual story videos, then I want you to know that this video will contain new stuff you haven't seen before about them both. So whose side are you on? Let's find out. 39 days. 20 people, one survivor. Laura Moret, a 39-year-old office manager from Oregon and also the mother of future Survivor legend Sierra Easton, was a castaway on season 19, Survivor Samoa. Shambo Waters, a 45-year-old saleswoman and ex-Marine from Washington State, was a castaway on season 19, Survivor Samoa. And this is Survivor's first visit to Samoa. And what a beautiful location it is. This season features 20 all-new players split onto the yellow Foa Foa tribe and the purple glue. And right away, we are introduced to the woman herself, Shambo. This lady with her free flowing moa, she's probably some super outdoors woman that will naturally set forth as our leader. Dude, I'm a people magnet. People have gravitated to me my entire life. It's like, oh my God, this chick rocks. We love her. Well, if that isn't a classic introduction to a character we're supposed to root for, I don't know what is. Jeff then tells both tribes, hey, you need to pick a leader right now. And this is the first time Survivor has ever had them pick their own leaders out of the gate and it's about time they made this into a game mechanic with how much Jeff loves the idea of teams having leaders. Foa Foa picks Mick and Galoo picks Russell Swan. They are then told hey we're doing a reward challenge right now pick who you want to compete in it and Russell picks Shambo to do the puzzle for the reward challenge and she's like oh no don't, don't pick me I'm not book smart I'm street smart and despite Galoo losing said challenge it's not Shambo's fault at all. Jeff says, Galoo, you are definitely the underdogs. They get to their camp and right away, Russell Swan takes the leadership role and everyone listens. Wow, that's a bit surprising. In other seasons, that's not usually how it goes. Shambo likes his leadership, but she says he needs to be harder on these people. They're slacking off, standing around talking about the best way to build the shelter. Just build the shelter. That's what Shambo says. But what's important is that the show portrays her work first, talk later attitude as the reasonable one. But then, when the tribe goes out for a swim, Shambo is struggling. Oh, these young kids. I didn't want to go in the damn water. It's crazy because I have to constantly remind myself, this is not the Marine Corps, and all these people are in their mid-20s. So the way that the rest of the tribe does things is going to be way different than the way that I do things. So Russell as the leader, I, I'm, I'm struggling with it. He's not being assertive. He's not leading right now. In my opinion, he needs to open a can of whoop ass and lay some laws down. And that's what I would have done. That would have been my game plan. This is the perfect time to contrast Shambo with Rudy from season one. Both of these players were ex-military, both of them were older, and both needed to make a change to fit into their group. Rudy recognized this right away and adapted, and Shambo, she seems to reject the idea. And in this secret scene, we see how Laura and the rest of the women are immediately connecting. Hey, you know what we're gonna need? What we need one of you guys to do is we need a palm prong split up the middle. We need a really leafy one like that. It's definitely a social awkwardness that she has with everybody, and 
She just doesn't get when she does something that annoys people. She just doesn't get it. She's 45 years old, and you'd think by that time you'd get how to interact with people. And that, that frustrates me because I don't even like to be around her. I've never spent a lot of time with somebody like Shambo. The overt aggression and the overt tomboyish behavior, I think, turns a lot of people off, especially when you have pretty girls here. Like the hot chicks we have around here aren't as likely to connect with someone like Shambo that's just a brood, and there's no way you can get around that. It's in your face 24-7. This is only the beginning. Shambo is an outlier on her tribe as they all get along, and she just doesn't fit in because, well, she doesn't want to, and she doesn't try to. We then go to the immunity challenge where best group of people I could ever meet. Everybody's pulling their weight. Everybody tough as nails. Jeff, I've never read that book. <laughs> Things losers say. Mm. <laughs> that was really good. That was good. Can we start this, Jeff? Because I'm ready to open some cans of whoop ass. <laughs> and back at camp, Shambo decides to try and make fire with what they just won. But uh, no, no, don't from above, from no, the side. No, 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 no. Don't Hush. Touch, don't you guys shut up, please. Don't blow. It's like fireworks, isn't it? Damn. When we were making fire, it was pretty frustrating because Shambo really wanted to be the one to make fire. The problem is, Shambo doesn't really know how to make fire. You wanna, you wanna hit some flint on here? I would love to crack at it, but I would very much like to be in charge of for the time that I am doing it. Whatever, now you're pissing me off. Oh, okay. Well, Let's not have a conversation. Let's, cool. No, cool, no problem. Serious. Dave's just a complete and utter moron. He won't take assistance or help from anybody for anything. Nothing in my life has ever operated without teamwork, so it just hit me the wrong way. You know, I have to constantly remind myself, this is, you're not at home, Shannon. This isn't your family. In my awesomeness, it speaks for itself. I'm the provider, I'm the fire maker. So, I'm pretty much bulletproof, I think. That was a secret scene, but them choosing to leave it out of the main show is definitely making sure we're still rooting for Shambo and not seeing her obvious glaring social flaws. In fact, that's why I feel about both secret scenes that they've cut out so far. I think the show wants us to sympathize with her and in some ways we do, but her ego seems to be what she uses to cover up her insecurities and that's not really an attractive feature in any human. By the way, if you want to pick what I cover for videos and watch everything up to six months early, then consider joining my Once Upon an Island Patreon. You can cancel at any time, and there is a 15% discount if you do sign up for one year. Thank you for your support. We move on to episode two, where we see a secret scene of Eric, Laura, and Monica finding some fruit and eating it but hiding it from their tribe. They don't want them to know where the fruit is. Already, we see how close Laura and Monica are, but enough of that for now, because it is time for Schmergen Brawl, a reward challenge that's kind of like a mix of rugby and basketball. Basically, people smack and tackle each other to get the ball to their shooters, and Jeff is constantly warning people to not break the rules, but like no one's listening. Heck, Laura even tries to choke out Natalie White. He then says, okay, final warning everyone, anyone who breaks the rules again is gone, no questions asked, and not but like a minute later, Ben kicks Swan in the back of the leg and is ejected. What a tool. He says he doesn't care and he isn't apologizing for it. So now it's time. Who will win this immunity challenge? Laura goes underhand. Laura hey, scores for the lose. Yeah. Three, one. Now you win reward and immunity. Okay, knee me in the chest. You got somebody plays by the rules and then he comes. Before, Back, before you move, I want to I want to say something. Yes. I want to play within the rules and I want to be try to be a sportsman. But if someone is going to try and elbow me, I'm coming for him. But I'm coming for John in the next one. I'm coming for him. I just got one short sweep. That was a, a beautiful, amazing competition. The only thing that I'm really disheartened about is I'm coming for you. Jason, let's leave the blood on the battlefield. Nobody needs to get hurt. Say the same thing to your teammate over there, and then we'll all okay. be good. Good on Shambo to try and defuse that mess, but I failed to mention that during the challenge, Mike Barassi of the Foa Foa tribe gets medically evacuated. So now all of a sudden, Galoo is up 10 to seven. So much for being the underdogs. Back at camp once again, Shambo takes the new reward item for herself. And in this case, it's the fishing gear and- You guys want the good news or the bad news? Bad news. Bad news? Yeah. I had no luck in the ocean. I was in the- You broke the- uh... I didn't break it. It floated off while I was in the swamp. I wasn't using the mouthpiece. I was using this, the mouse. You couldn't find it? It's in the swamp. There's the nothing I can out. do. And the good news? There are hundreds of thousands of fish on the reef, so 
the good news is, you'll never believe it. There's fish in the ocean. You know, I feel sorry for her in one sense because she's kind of desperate right now trying to catch fish. And then on top of not catching the fish, she loses our stuff. You just signed your own death warrant is basically what you did. Dude, Laura and Shambo don't like each other at all. And as we move to episode three, their rivalry takes the next step when right now we're winning we're feeling good there's great morale we're working hard we're all pitching in at camp we're all doing stuff Exhale out. so we don't have to always be in game mode and that's a huge huge advantage that we have over fofo are you freaking kidding me we got four people doing yoga this morning. Kind of alienated from my tribe because I'm not in the 90210 click. I'm not doing the warm and fuzzy. I'm doing the Rambo Shambo provider roll out here. Do we have water? No. Do we have food? No. Do we have firewood? No. Screw yoga, man. Someone is going to win this war between Shambo and Laura, and I just don't know who that will be yet. The glue tribe goes on to win reward and immunity again and now they're up 10 to 6 over foa foa but then russell swan is given a choice for his tribe he can either choose comfort in the form of pillows and blankets or function in the form of a tarp he picks comfort almost immediately and says this is for the ladies because this is what they want all of the ladies especially laura are thrilled about this and the men are like what the heck and russell swan is tasked with sending one of his own to foa foa for the day so he sends shambo and upon arriving at their new camp near mick yeah Hi. We call you McDreamy. <laughs> so at the end of the challenge, winning tribe got to pick someone to come over to our tribe. So Russell chose Shambo. Uh, totally different vibe than, than Yasmin. I mean, she's just, we'd like to adopt her. I mean, she's just such great energy. She's just good people. One of my main objectives in this game was to create interpersonal relationships as soon as possible. So when Russell picked me to go, I was tickled pink to head over and check out Fofo. There was a lot of chitter chat. I shared with them, they shared with me. And it's funny, people here are closer to my own age. They get me, I get them. I feel like I have more in common with this tribe than people on my tribe. Yeah. 90210 wanted to do yoga this morning instead yoga. of get water. Really? We don't have the luxury of I doing know. yoga. We're like up. I'm sorry, baby. I'm not in the survivor game to play yoga, okay? Uh, what's going on? How is Shambo being so nice and friendly with these people, but she can't seem to be nice to any of the glue members at all? I am dumbfounded. But good for her, I guess. She is gifted a clue to the hidden immunity idol that is hidden somewhere on Foa Foa, but she has no idea where it is. The clue isn't really specific enough, so she takes the time to teach Foa Foa some helpful camp life tricks and they appreciate it. But I need to mention that Laura is the leader of these women now, except for Shambo. They all adore and follow her. We moved to episode four where Shambo comes back to camp and doesn't feel welcomed. In fact, she says she feels closer to Foa Foa now and is likely to flip to them come the chance. Galoo then wins the reward challenge, which nets them chickens and Swan assigns Shambo the job of giving the chickens water every day since she says she grew up with chickens and she knows them really well. That's all fine and dandy, but then she starts clucking like one and then she clucks at them. And the next day, she's still clucking at the chickens. And Russell Swan's like, what the heck? Did I make a mistake picking her? So later on in the day, Shambo, expert chicken wrangler, makes a blunder. Hey, 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 steak chicken, a steak chicken. 911. Where'd he go, Shambo? Where'd he go? I didn't know they could freaking fly. I'm not calling Shambo stupid but it's a bird for crying out loud. I would think you being a country girl would assume that something with wings can fly. So yeah, I was just beyond, just, I, I was stunned. I mean, what can I even say? Swan is right and everyone has all the reason in the world to be over Shambo, despite how entertaining she is for us on the show. Galoo surprisingly loses immunity for the first time ever and back at camp people are debating over who to vote out. Yasmin or Shambo. The reasons for our protagonist are obvious to be voted off, but the argument for Yasmin is that she is very, very, very lazy. Her and Yasmin agree to vote out Monica, and at Tribal Council, Monica, thanks for always singing my favorite Sugarland song. I think you said it yourself. You sit around camp and wait for somebody to tell you what to do. You can't sit around, you gotta take initiative. Fourth person voted out of Survivor Samoa. Yasmin. Yasmin, chop spoken. 
If Shambo weren't such a mess and a detriment to the group, I would label that moment as villainous. But Laura is basically speaking for the tribe and I can't disagree. Monica then agrees and says Shambo is next. Galu then wins reward, which includes a lot of food. And once again, Swan sends Shambo to Foa Foa where she doesn't get any food and this offends her. He says it's because she lost the chicken, but uh, I think he was just making the decision that most everybody in Galu wanted anyways. At Foa Foa, everyone hugs her and she reads the next clue to the hidden immunity idol out loud to everyone. And uh, yeah, no one was expecting her to do this. And frankly, information is king in this game. You don't want to just give it away for free. Stop doing that. She looks in the tree where the idol should be, but it's missing. Russell Hand says, yeah, Ben found it, the guy we voted off a couple episodes ago, and it was in his pocket. The others agree that, yeah, I think Ben went out with it too, but spoiler alert for those watching this video, Russell Hans has it, and he's tricking her. Galoo does win reward, but it isn't a tarp, which sucks, so now all of those comfort items are wet. At the immunity challenge, it is a blowout as Russell Swan and Laura beat Russell Hans and Liz easily. Episode six continues the rain, and apparently it's now been five days straight of this. Wow. But finally, it breaks and a rainbow comes out right before the reward challenge where Jeff says, hey, sucks to suck because both tribes are going to tribal no matter what. This challenge you're playing for is just for pizza. And considering that Russell Swan has been overworking himself at camp and this is just for pizza, multiple people say, hey, just sit out. It's not a big deal. You need the rest. And he says, no, I'm good. So with Laura leading their tribe in the challenge. Left, 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 left. left. Hold on. <sighs> no, no, no idea ball. where he's at right okay. now. Down. The ball is right. Yeah, no, we have to go down towards. Whoa, Russell, you with me? I'm good. He he was out. Yeah, he was sorry. definitely out. Russ, 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 are you with us? Put right in. Russ, Russell, Russ, talk to me. Russ, talk to me. Russell, Russell, wake up, mate. Wake up. There? Huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you remember what just happened? Huh? His heart rate was 97 when we sat him up, and now it's 68. Okay. And it dropped. It dropped like really that. suddenly. Don't feel comfortable getting him in. Not with his heart doing what it's doing. My family depends on me to be the strong one. Is this how you want this no. to be? No. No. It's frustrating to be pulled out of a game you wanted to be a part of for so long. You were in great shape. You were the leader of a tribe that was dominating. You were no sign that you were going home anytime soon. You pushed and pushed and pushed your body until your body said, enough. There's nothing about that that is a quitter. Yeah, their leader is gone, just like that. Back at camp, people obviously miss Russell Swan since he did a great job. But as soon as they can, they start talking about who should go next. Laura says, obviously, it's going to be Shambo. But then Shambo gets in a fight with Monica a.k.a. Laura's right-hand lady. See, I'm just asking you guys to not write my name down today. Mm -hmm. I mean, I started the fire the first eight days we were here. Yeah. Chief and I collected 100% of the firewood the first eight days we were here. I have been a good competitor, an honest competitor, a fair competitor. I have not lied to anyone in this game. That's fine, but despite the fact my name got written down twice, the only person here that wrote it down last tribal was you. Who, who made fire for you the first eight days you were here, Monica? Who kept you warm and dry and safe? Who didn't write my name down? Everyone else in this tribe except for you. I mean, there's no way Shambo wins, right? We are too close to the merge and she has made zero friends on Galoo. And Galoo likely is going to make up at least half of the jury. Well, I say that, but then Eric and John promise to vote out Monica next, not Shambo. Well, 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 things are looking up. It's raining again, but Laura misses Swan and says they're gonna have to refocus and move on, but it's gonna be hard to do because he was a good leader. But if they do go to travel soon, you better believe Shambo's gone. If we were going to travel council right now, Shambo is going, 100%. She's never really gelled with the tribe and she's been over to the other tribe, but none of us have. And so when we merge, she could very easily swap sides. Remember earlier when I mentioned that Laura and Monica are close? Well, others see this and they want to split them up, namely John. However, with Swan gone, they are required to pick a new leader and in a vote that kind of catches everyone off guard. One, two, three. <laughs> okay. Four votes for Sam. Four votes for Sham. Sam's leader. Okay. Congratulations. <laughs> no, <I don't> <laughs> 
I obviously did not ask for this. I will do the best I can by you guys. My leadership style is night and day from Russ and I will honestly, honestly, honestly do my due diligence to not be bossy because you can't really be a sergeant in the United States Marine Corps and not have an expectation when you say something, things will happen. Ah, here it goes. Shambo's ego's back. This ain't the military, Shambo. It's Survivor. Rudy understood this in season one, but yeah, Shambo doesn't get it. She is so excited by this newfound power, and the women are confused as to what just happened with that vote. Galu goes on to win reward, and Shambo's told, hey, you can send one person to Foa Foa who will not enjoy the reward with you. Who do you want? And... I'm going to send Laura over to Foa Foa because I need to keep my guys strong for our challenge tomorrow, and I'm not sending myself for a third time. Now it's Shambo's chief. It's like she was raised in a trailer park, married a rich guy, now she's driving around a Jaguar, treating everyone like crap, you know? She sent Laura over to the other tribe, and Laura's one of our strongest females. I don't know if she has strategy. I don't know if she's just pulling this out of her ass. I don't know. Yeah, I figured so Sham would know. send me. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, I figured she would. There's definitely an undercurrent why Sham sent me over to the Foa Foa tribe. I mean, I mean, clearly she doesn't like me. OK, so you have twins. Mm-hmm. I have twin girls. It's not on. My dad's a preacher. Please? I'm a theology student. Really? Mm -hmm. I got my degree in women's ministries. I swear to you, you can trust me. What are we going to do? Go to the final two, the two of us? Final together? two. Russell came to me and was conspiring to have this secret alliance that clearly nobody would ever suspect. And, you know, that's another card that I stick in my pocket that I might want to play. I mean, you know, it's just food for thought. You know, when it comes down to it, I hope it's final three. Because you know what I hope? I, I would hope it would be me, you, and Natalie in the final three. Well, I was happy when they decided to send Laura to our camp because it doesn't look like we're going to go with numbers and to emerge. So what I have to do now is work my Houdini magic on Laura. I can spot a good Christian any time. It's easy. There's no immunity out of here. Did she find it? Ben found it and didn't play it. Now, Laura doesn't really know Russell Hance, so I guess you could take that deal at face value, but it does seem off since they just met and so does him being a Christian. He doesn't seem authentic at all. This is immediately contrasted with her hanging out with Natalie, who seems very genuine, especially when they're discussing their faith. And yeah, it's almost like night and day between these two people. Although Natalie doesn't offer an alliance, Galoo goes on to win immunity. And with that, we enter episode eight, where Shambo and Laura just go at it. I don't know what's going on with me and Shambo. When I got sent over to the other tribe, Dave handed her my canteen. I didn't care. But when I came back to camp, I said, where is it? And then she makes this huge big deal and then all of a sudden brings up all these other things that I have no idea what she's even talking about. There's some like little power struggle going on between you and I and I don't, I don't get it. I don't understand it. I don't like it. Now, how you perceive that, if your feelings get hurt and if you're like, well, what's her problem? Well, that's on you. It wasn't a fight about canteens. It really is the way that she treats me on a regular basis. It's almost like those popular girls in high school that are cheerleaders that want to snob their nose at people that don't fit into their circle. I'm done with her. I have no use for her. None. You have a way of turning things about. So like, now I look like the bad person. Like I blew this whole thing up. Like, where's my canteen? Where's my canteen? What is this about the canteen? They're totally arguing over nothing. Absolutely nothing. To be honest, we know Shambo's crazy. So if you get in a fight with Shambo, who's the one that looks bad? You look bad. If you fight with Shambo, that means you're just as crazy as her, only you're not really crazy. You're just being a bitch. Congratulations, Fofo and Galoo. You are now on track. Uh, I am guessing Shambo is flipping as soon as possible, but Galoo does have an 8-4 lead, so even if Shambo flips, it would be 7-5. It's not enough to give Foa Foa the upper hand, though that lead is the largest for any tribe going into the merge ever to this point. This should be an easy pagonging of Foa Foa, and from there, Laura should be able to secure her spot in the final three alongside Monica and Kelly, since they seem to connect the best with her. Well, everyone feasts, and we see Natalie and Laura reconnect immediately. Hey, maybe Natalie can go to the final three with Laura and Monica. Who cares? Either way, Laura should win. Hans and Laura also reconnect, and... You know what this is? If you could take me to the top seven, I'll hand it to you. I swear I will. I can't believe Russell showed me he had the idol. But you know what? Desperate people do desperate things. I don't believe he would give that to me, but just knowing that he has it is 
huge, which means when we do get rid of them, it's going to have to be a big blindside. Who do you want the first one to go? One of my guys? It'll be one of your guys or Shambo. Right. It's kind of funny. Russell came to me with this attitude of like, I'm the boss and here's some rules, he tells me. And I'm like, okay, well, just so you know, I kind of hold all the cards right now and um, you just need to try and stay alive. You're in a worse position than myself at this point. You're coming here with 10%, I got 90. All right. Laura's digging her own grave. She told me, I'm 90% in charge of this, Russell. You're about 10% right now. In other words, sit down and listen. <laughs> no, it don't work like that for me. Okay. She might be the first to go. Well, so much for the deal he offered last episode. I guess that broke down super quick. These two seem to be at war already. Fun. Shambo says, wow, I'm on a sugar high right now. That feast really got her jacked up, which I don't think is good for the Shambo. Oh. Oh. Well, okay. Thanks. Damn, dude. Don't love me more. Kiss my shirt. My ear? Do you rub warriors like this? Do you call it? Do you do that to warriors? No. I'm a warrior. Well, you might be a warrior, but I'm still a woman. So, you know, you go, sometimes you're going to get the soft and tender, okay? I'm like, Sham, stop. You cannot treat me like that. I, and I was like, I'm a warrior. Get that in your head. Shambo is a total lunatic. And I'm like, ah, don't kiss me, old woman. You're crazy, you're kooky, you're lucky to be here. Do me the one favor of keeping your snaggle tooth, crazy hair, urine smell away from me. Don't kiss me, grandma. I'll punch you in the face. Ah, ah. <laughs> gross, just, just gross. I don't even think I would want my wife to just like come up and lick my ear like that. We then see Russell Hans and Shambo connect and apparently they both agree. We hate Laura. Shambo is a really good person and we do connect. I think it has a lot to do with my Southern background. People trust the South. So she could be one of my numbers. I mean, I could use her for that. You ain't worried about Laura doing some kind of sneaky move on you? Of course I am. Knowing what a little spiteful snake she is, she's half the battle. Shambo hates Laura. She hates her. So I know at any point she'll vote Laura's name. I trust Russell implicitly. The guy is definitely cut from the same cloth as me. He's a country boy, I'm a country girl. And he just keeps bringing up that Laura needs to go first. She's the bane of my existence in Samoa. So it's not like we need this multi-layered plot. Write Laura's name down tonight, it's that simple. Ah, bonding over the hatred of someone else, a tale as old as time. But Russell nor Shambo have the numbers to make this Laura elimination happen. Russell would need to play his idol perfectly, but unfortunately for Shambo, that's probably going to be impossible because he has told literally all of Galoo, hey, I have an idol. We then see in a secret scene how Eric finally re-catches the chicken that Shambo let free earlier, and that night Russell Hant says, I'm going to free this chicken to cause chaos. That is until Dave wakes up and interrupts him. So we go to the immunity challenge where Laura cannot win. Laura lands it in the four. Laura wins individual immunity. Congratulations. When I saw Laura win immunity, I got a gut-wrenching feeling in my stomach. The plan had been put into motion. We're gonna write down Laura's name tonight, and now we can't. So that sucked because I really wanted her gone. Ha ha, Shambo is sad, but who cares? That's only good for Laura. Eric says, these FOA FOA members suck. They can't win anything. And Laura then talks to him and says, we need a way to flush out Russell's idol, but without directly targeting Russell, because obviously that would backfire. But then out of left field, John says, forget targeting FOA FOA. They aren't a threat. And he talks to Eric and says, we need to get out Monica to weaken Laura. What? It is far too soon for this nonsense. And he is dead serious. He even tells Eric his plan. And Eric's like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. What is this whole weakening strategy? Like they have the lead, just get rid of Foa Foa. It's just like, it's dumb all around. So then this happens. Eric came to us and he was like, well, y'all four need to be He's freaking out. Why is he freaking out? He wants all of the girls gone. I don't trust Eric. Okay, we can't have my partners. Hey, Kel, what's yeah. up? Okay. She it's wants to know if we can Think of it this way, Golu still has plenty of people. Plenty. Kelly and Laura, I just basically let them know that Eric needed to go now. We have four people, they have eight. It's not a big deal if they lose one. Now Eric is getting blamed for the plan that John came up with. It's so dumb, but the emotions are running high as Laura and Kelly start telling 
everyone that Eric is a snake and he needs to go. And in a secret scene, we see CGI Brett say, this is all emotion. Let's just vote off a foe fo a member tonight and reconsider Eric at the next vote. Russell says, let's vote off Monica next. And Shambo says, no can do. And I personally am like, what the heck? Why doesn't she want Monica to go? That's literally Laura's right hand lady. Shambo says, I only want Laura or bust. Basically, I only want Laura or a foe fo a member to go. And in a secret scene with Shambo and Dave, we see them not getting along. But Dave explains that Shambo isn't being targeted by the group because the guys at Galoo think they can control her easily, and that makes her a guaranteed vote. So we go to Tribal Council, where... Sorry, E, but your own paranoia was your demise. The minute that you decided to go against Galoo and turn against the girls, you had to go. Just... If I know the head, I might as well play it. This is a hidden immunity idol. Any votes cast for Russell tonight will not count. First vote, Jason. Jason. Two votes, Jason. Eric. Eric. Two votes, Jason. Two votes, Eric. Eric. That's three votes, Eric. 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 That's five votes, Eric. Eric. Six votes, Eric. Seventh person voted out of Survivor Samoa and the first member of our jury. Eric, Eric, Chop is spoken. In case you don't already know, Russell Hance is the main character of this season. It's not even close. So uh, when Laura goes against him, she's the villain, despite her view being rational from a bird's eye view, from a third party's perspective. But the show presents Russell as this Picasso, as this genius, as the Michael Jordan of Survivor, and anyone who's against him is evil. I say this because Laura calls Russell's idol play dumb and says he is gone next. We then see a secret scene where Laura and Kelly are connecting and Kelly says this game is easy and there isn't anything to be stressed about. Uh oh, that's usually not a good sign when they show us that. We then get another secret scene where Shambo and Laura talk about Shambo's family and... How many of you are there? Nine kids. My uh, brother passed away, right? My brother Terry died of meningitis when he was about three months old and then my sister Donna died of cancer the day before her 27th birthday sad. Well, they're better off. How old were you? I was 23. I was stationed in Okinawa, and I remember my staff sergeant saying, Corporal Waters, go back to the barracks. You got an emergency phone call from the Red Cross. I just started bawling. I was like, God dang it. Come on. Where's our sunshine? Laura and I did not have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation. Laura invaded a private moment that I was having on the beach where I was really homesick. I was missing my family and I started thinking about my sister that had passed away over 20 years ago. I was just, I was pretty much broken down and sad and she wanted to play buddy buddy with me and her little reach out and touch me superficial bull. I can't stand Laura. I want no conversations with her. You don't even like me and you want to sit here and pretend like you're befriending me. It's just like, don't make me throw up on your face. You can tell by Laura's face that she doesn't really care and it may have been better just to not talk to Shambo at all rather than pretend. Yeah. Shambo's team wins reward and on said reward they get a clue to where the hidden immunity idol is back at their camp. Since Russell Hans isn't on this reward, everyone's like, yeah, we got to make sure Russell Hans doesn't get this idol because he's going out next. Shambo says we don't need to try to target Russell. He sucks at challenges. But Kelly says, yeah, I think Shambo's trying to protect him. But even if Shambo were to defect, Galoo has a number, so I'm not super worried about it. Back at camp, Russell talks to Shambo and pulls a surprise out of his hat. You can I'm gonna have to you're gonna have to do dude, me help. Dude, me. dude, her head is getting freaking lopped off. I have been pretty much aligned with Foa Foa for the last two weeks. I really hit it off with those guys, created some really great relationships. Russ is probably the one guy in this game that I impeccably trust. <laughs> <laughs> Our plan is let them vote Russell. So when six of them vote Russell, we'll come back vote Laura. He'll play the hidden immunity idol and she'll go home. So, I am so excited. If, if Medusa wins immunity, yeah. we get rid of one of her posse. Yeah. And then she's gonna be scrambling. It looks like Laura's elimination is back on the menu, boys. She just can't win immunity. It's very simple. So, at said immunity challenge. Laura wins individual immunity. Safe tonight at Tribal Council. 
Laura is safe at tonight's tribal council. Oh, the challenge sucked because Laura won and now we can't vote her off and my heart is broken. I'm so sad. I'm pissed. Again. Ha ha. Shambo is sad, but who cares? Back at camp, Laura says Russell is a goner. He doesn't have his idol anymore, so this is gonna be easy. In fact, Natalie might even join us in on this vote. It's gonna be that simple. Monica then says, let's split our votes just in case Russell does have another idol. And Dave says, nah, that's not gonna be necessary. He can't find idols without clues. Laura then says, foe of foe will be picked off one after another until Galoo becomes the final seven. Very evil when the show wants us to root for foe of foe, and especially Hans. So we go to tribal council, where? He lied to me from day one, and so it's hard to build a trustworthy relationship from there. Sorry. I ain't finished playing just yet. Keep hope alive. This is an idol. Any votes cast against Russell will not count. First vote. Russell does not count. Russell does not count. Russell, that's three votes. Russell, none of them count. Russell does not count. Russell does not count. Russell does not count. Russell does not count. Kelly. Oh my God. Two votes, Kelly. Just Eighth person voted out of Survivor Samoa and the second member of our jury. Kelly. Kelly, the tribe has spoken. It is episode 10 and Laura says she knew Russell was sneaky and so she should have known he had another idol. Shambo even laughs and says Laura being blindsided tonight was so sweet and she wants to give Russell another idol to make it happen again. Laura's team then wins reward, but weirdly enough, the entire reward is from Nally's perspective. Hmm. They then get a clue to the next idol and Laura's like, crap, I gotta stop Russell when we get back to camp. So when they do get back there. We totally underestimated Russell's capability of finding the idol. What we need to do is keep that hidden immunity idol out of Russell's hands. Looking for the same thing I'm looking for, Jason? I don't know. What are you looking for? <laughs> You're the one that's listening up rock. I know that it has to be where that wall is in camp. They have a rock in a little hoe, square hoe. Looks like the rock in the picture to me. There it is. Oh my God. And my butt's probably in the sling more than ever. But not if they think I have an idol. I'm gonna be a okay. <laughs> so much focus is on Russell that you wouldn't even know that Laura could target Mick and Jason to weaken him, but whatever, I guess. Monica then talks to her and says, hey, rumor is that not only is Shambo flipping to Kafoa Foa, but another Galoo member is as well. We just don't know exactly who that is yet. Shambo then says that Laura is the head viper and she needs to go. Still, I mean, she's needed to go for like two or three episodes now in Shambo's mind, but she still needs to go. Shambo then talks to John about the idea of flipping a foe a foe to give them the numbers lead over the Galoo members, and he seems to be considering the idea, which is kind of a surprise, and he says it's because Galoo is so stupid since the merge that he's considering flipping. Heck, in this secret scene, we see how upset Monica is at the idea of Galoo collapsing, and Shambo says, listen up, sweetheart, open your mind to the BS you all are spewing. Drop the bull about Galoo loyalty. Because there is none. It's Puff the Magic frickin' Dragon, okay? Why, Shambo? That's a pipe dream. Why? Why does it have to be that way? Because you guys chose to vote for Galoo before Foa Foa, and it broke. But it was different. It's He was turning it always his back is. on Galoo. It always is because it's Survivor. And why was our conversations had, by led, led by Laura, to get rid of Shambo? That's fake purple. So don't talk to me about fake purple. Purple is fake. So we go to the immunity challenge and Shambo desperately needs Laura to lose for like the third time now. <laughs> no shot at immunity for Laura. Mick wins individual immunity. I believe it is the destiny of Laura to go home. Today is the day of reckoning. Medusa's head will be lopped off. Well, shoot, hopefully that glue member flipping rumor isn't true. It wouldn't be Monica or CGI Brett. They seem loyal. So is it Dave or is it John? I think we know the answer to this one. Well, Laura talks to Dave and John and says we should wait till the last minute to make a decision. And by that, I mean, let's target Russell. Why would she say that and then say let's target Russell two seconds later? It's confusing. John says no. Russell could pull the same trick again with the idol. Let's get Natalie. No way would she have an idol and no way would anyone play an idol for her. Though John does worry about rock draw if they do get back to back tie votes. 
We then see a secret scene between Russell and Laura where Can I ask one thing, a favor from you? One thing. What? I don't want to be the one that gets blindsided. If you tell me, I'll just go. You can tell me right before, you can tell me 10 minutes before, or a minute before. I want to see Russell go home tonight. The tough part for me in this game is that balance of of lying to somebody. No, I don't I don't want to lie to somebody. But can you manipulate them enough to where you can avoid the line? You know what? I don't know. I can't make you that promise um, because I also have allegiance to other people. But if it's okay with them, then I will totally give you a heads up. Well, you're the one on the tribe that lied to all of us. Right. That's the huge thing. They played the game the hardest. Everybody plays the game different. No, you're the. I played the game hard. I didn't lie to you. Did you lie to Eric? You think blindsided is not blind? You I told, told him, him right up front. No, I didn't tell him he was going to go home. I never told him he was going to go home. He never asked me. I didn't come out here to just camp for 39 days. I came out here to win a million dollars. And I owe Russell nothing. Absolutely nothing. I owe Russell my vote to get him off the island is what I owe Russell. At Tribal Council, Shambo says, Galoo isn't tight. And Laura says, we absolutely are. We are a tight tribe. And Jeff steps in and says, whoa, if Galoo is tight and Shambo is part of Galoo and she's defecting, then Galoo isn't tight. And Laura says, hmm, not necessarily. Hmm. Well, they all go to vote, and... We tried and tried again to get you to come to our tribe, but you just wouldn't, so we gotta get you. Bye now. Laura, you're a viperous poison. I pray to God you go tonight. The other day you told me that I may be faster than you, but you're smarter than me. You see, that's why you're going home tonight. You underestimated me. First vote, Laura. Natalie, one vote Laura, one vote Natalie. Natalie. Two votes, Natalie. Laura. Two votes, Laura. Laura. That's three votes, Laura. <laughs> Natalie. That's four votes, Laura. Natalie. Laura. Natalie. We have a tie. Here's how the tie is going to work. Laura and Natalie, you will not vote. Everybody else will vote. You can only vote for Laura or Natalie. Unwavering in this decision. Okay, second round. Let's see what happens. First vote. Laura. Two votes, Laura. Laura. That's three votes, Laura. Natalie. Natalie. Tied again. Laura. That's four votes, Laura. Three votes, Natalie. One vote left. Ninth person voted out and the third member of our jury. Laura. Laura, the tribe has spoken. Wow, I mean, Laura really had it coming for a while. The men of Galoo wanted her gone, and of course, Shambo was dying to get her out as soon as possible. That's all she cared about the entire post-merge, get Laura out. But now with Laura out of the game, let's see what she says about Shambo and what Eric and Kelly on Ponderosa think of her as well. I believe that I'm sitting here tonight for a couple of reasons. One, because, um, you know, Shambo has always had it out for me. She always talks about this dissension in the G G Galoo tribe. There was no dissension. It was just her. You swear that Sham was already locked in with 4 at Merck. So instead of 8-4, it really was 7-5. Uh -huh. So if you guys burn me right off the bat, we you take it down 6-5. I mean, that seems like a really bad move. To it wasn't thought through. It wasn't thought through. Seriously. What? Yeah. Five, ten minutes before we went. The decision was made. That was a two for one. They got a two for one. Then. If you had. Well, clearly that if was answered, and you do have to go out, so you might as well do it now. That's your opinion. You are out of some opinion, isn't that? For you. For you, you're sitting right across from me. Yeah, if I were Eric, I would probably be ticked as well. Galoo had this thing in the bag and they collapsed under the weight of their own stupidity while Shambo's out there thriving. Bummer for them, but great for the Shan with a plan. Episode 12 sees happy days as everyone gets money and tree mail, and this means it is Survivor Auction Time, an event that should happen far more often on the show than it currently does. We see Shambo win a mystery dish for $240, but as it turns out, it is meant to gross her out, but it doesn't. She takes it in stride and she eats it. Jason wins the challenge advantage, but since he isn't the next target, it isn't a big deal if he ends up winning immunity. Back at camp in a secret scene, John accidentally cuts himself 
And Shambo examines his head and says, hey, you're going to be okay. You won't need stitches. And John's like, hey. I don't believe you. But as it turns out, Shambo is right. The rest of the tribe who didn't win food at the auction decide we're eating a chicken since they never lay eggs and I'm starving. And Shambo, she personally apologized to her foul friends. And then she becomes a dictator of sorts. Can we roast this at least one so we can get no, some like... No, absolutely right. not. I'll take care of the cooking because I might not know a lot about a lot of things, but when it comes to cooking... That's time to say shut up if you're me. I think most people just want to skewer the chicken, put it over the fire, but Shambo being the chef and all that is going to like want to do something crazy. And so um, that's a hard boil. Yeah, um, we're not having a conversation about the soup this time, everybody, because I'm in no mood. So just trust me. We'll just call it a bad case of PMS, but I'm really in no mood to talk about the soup today. I won those chickens, Shambo. So I think I should be able to say something. Go right ahead, because I'm not listening. To have him walk up to me and say, what's going on with the chicken, are they done? I went, red code emergency alert, Shannon has lost her mind. He has absolutely no idea who he's picking a fight with today. There is no way Shambo can win. I know I've said that before, but like, it, she just keeps compounding the issue. She can't win. The best she can do right at this point is get third place. But then Shambo has a dream and the show does some wild editing to accompany it. She dreamed Dave will be voted off and says, God told me this will happen. And Russell's like, yeah, okay, we'll see about that. We go to tribal council and since Jason won immunity, the remaining glue members who are not Shambo are scrambling to stay in the game. And Shambo's like, why are, you, why are they doing that? Why are they scrambling? And Jeff's like, Shambo, are you serious? These people, they're obviously on the outs and they're gonna be voted off. Of course they're scrambling to stay in the game. Shambo's like, well, Jeff, I don't think they deserve to be in the game. And in fact, only people who deserve the million dollars deserve to be at the final three. And I have to ask everyone here, uh, by what metric? By what metric does someone deserve to be in the final three? In my opinion, if you reach the final three, that's how you deserve to be there. But Shambo clearly has some sort of moral issue she's having here. But uh, by what metric? What determines who is and who isn't worthy of reaching the final three? I don't know. So everyone goes to vote off Dave and... Dave, thanks for the chickens. They were great friends. Tenth person voted out the fourth member of our jury. John. She has no idea what happened. John? Travis spoken. Close boys. With John voted off, let's catch up with Laura and see how Ponderosa is going and if she will give John a pass like she wanted Eric to give her. You want to be civil about it, but yet you still have some hard feelings. He's the one that flipped on my vote. That was the plan. Why eliminate me? I was loyal to Galoo the whole time. Because it doesn't matter. Who was unhappy with their position in the eight? Dave Shambo. Sam's crazy. Shambo. Dave thought what would get better? Get rid of me? So Dave was the one targeting one? Everyone was targeting wire from the dude. Did you didn't know that? Yeah. You know what's funny is I didn't tell a lie the entire game. What do we got? I do not think that you were the you were the reason for the conflict right. between Shambo and I. Right. What I want to make perfectly clear is you were the reason that I went home. Well, I was the reason. That's just what, what I want to make clear. That, I, that's fine, but I disagree with that. I knew that you were going to get the five votes behind me. We kept a Shambo. I knew that Shambo was voting for me. You went because you picked a fight with Shambo, but you're not going to admit that. Because it's your perception doesn't make it the truth. I don't care. Like, I'm not if you're here to argue. You know, we're just having we're not you saying, We're not saying you're arguing, arguing but you're just saying being, that. like, I'm condescending. That you're saying that we're arguing. I just said I'm not here to argue. Oh. So just like we had to spend all the time with an idiotic tribe, we're going to spend all the time with an idiotic group and ponder us to do. Well, 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 how the tables have turned, though John is 100% a condescending jerk to everybody. John is gone and Shambo is stunned. Russell Hans lied to her about what the vote was going to be. Back at camp, he lies to her again and says, yeah, John was targeting you, Shambo, so we had to vote him off. Wink, wink. Okay, Russell. Okay. But Shambo believes him, and that's really the important part. But then, as we see in the secret scene, the game is wearing on Shambo, and she is an emotional wreck. Again. Shambo's being cranky with the fire, using a tone with me like I'm a freaking wounded three-year-old child. Shambo. Yeah, Dave. We communicate with our tone as well as our words. All right? I don't know about you. I'm tired of it. Okay. Go. That's the stuff. Come on over here. here. And she started crying. I don't want you mad at me. I don't care how she feels. She's crazy and insecure and I want her gone. We now have multiple secret scenes of Shambo being an emotional mess of some sort. 
first with Laura, then when she kissed Eric, and now here. Why are these cut out of the show? Because they want us to root for her, obviously. We then see Jason win immunity again, and Shambo says, sweet, Dave is next. But then Russell tells us he doesn't need Shambo anymore. And in fact, he can get rid of her anytime he wants. She is disposable to him, which is quite mean to say, but we'll dive into all that in Russell Hans's video. But for now, we go to tribal council where everyone votes and... Shambo, I'm voting for you because this is the name Russell gave me to keep my head off the block. I don't think it's gonna work, but it feels pretty good. See you later, Dave. 11th person voted out, and the fifth member of our jury, Dave. Dave, the tribe has spoken. Time to go. I guess Shambo's dream was fulfilled. Dave is gone. CGI Brett wins the next immunity, and basically that means Monica is the only Galoo member who doesn't have immunity and isn't aligned with Foa Foa. So we go to Tribal Council, and... Hopefully you get to have some cake for your birthday tomorrow. Twelfth person voted out and the sixth member of our jury, Monica. Monica, the tribe has spoken. Episode 14 brings with it a fire from Russell Hance. All of a sudden, CGI Brett is the biggest threat in the game and he has to go? What? Though I get it, think about it. At this point, Hance can't have any Galoo in the final three. The jury's all Galoo, and they're likely to vote for one of their own who didn't flip on them, which means Brett. Brett is the best candidate for them to vote for. But Shambo is feeling far too comfortable, and she doesn't really give the same thought, especially given everyone knows Russell has the idol. She's just like kind of chilling and says, wow, I need a haircut. And Russell makes fun of her and says, mullets went out in the 70s, and Shambo's had this haircut since 1984. At the reward challenge, her team wins, and on said reward, they get to spend time with the locals. I would I'd like to make a toast to the people of Samoa. From my heart to your heart, thank you for the warmth, the food, the companionship. Thank you. What I most wanted to do in Samoa was be part of that cultural experience with the native tribes here, and I was so happy. It superseded my expectation. Jason, look. <laughs> I did my little that. <laughs> Sometimes you're like a 45-year-old, 70-year-old. Dude, I'm seven all the time. I'm just a little goofball. That's what makes me happy, though. Being silly. Being a grown-up is just so overrated when you don't have to be. The last part was strange, to say the least. But back at camp, her and Russell are trying to figure out what their endgame plans are, with Russell being very open, to a fault, about his true intentions as seen in the secret scene. I was on a jury with Brett. Yeah. Who do you think would possibly vote for me? I know that Dave would vote for you, and... Natalie would vote for me. Nat would vote for you. Mick would vote for me. Mick would vote for you. That's three. That's how many? Three. All right. Jason would vote for you. Yeah, but that's one of the, you know, that's one of the three. What do you mean? It can't be all of them. They ain't all gonna be on the jury. They most certainly are. How? Oh. oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You're saying you're taking yeah. one of them, not me. No, no, I see what you're saying. I wasn't thinking. Brad's gonna Maybe you it, were thinking. Brett wasn't. Aha. Uh -huh. I said I made a mistake. It's all good, baby. I got you. Whatever. Don't be getting all huffy. You the one getting huffy. What are you talking about? Oh, for the love of Christ, shut the hell up. He slipped up and she caught him. And the real question is, what will Shambo do with this information? Well, considering it's a secret scene, probably nothing. We then see CGI Brett win immunity again. That jerk, that jerk, doesn't he know that Russell Hans wants him out? And Jason tells Russ, hey, we need to get Shambo out next, not Mick or Natalie. And that's when Shambo walks up on their conversation and she correctly assesses what Jason just said to Russell. And she asks him about it, but Russell just denies, denies, and denies. We then go to tribal council where everyone votes and... Mick, you're sweetie, it's either you or me. I gotta get rid of you today. The weakest link. 13th person voted out, the seventh member of our jury. Shambo. Shambo, the tribe has spoken. Yeah, this is bound to happen. I mean, I am a bit surprised Russell Hans didn't bring her to the final three, but even in Shambo's Ponderosa video, she says she figured she was being voted off next, so she said her goodbyes to everyone, including Brett. And she says, I'm not upset about it. Speaking of that, let's catch up on what happened with her and Laura now that they're back together again. How are you? I'm good. You have been beautiful in every tribal council. 
and having in-depth discussions with both John and Eric, Eric's mind is blown. He's like, you were probably the most brilliant player on Galoo, is what he told me last night. So that was kind of encouraging for me to hear because I definitely think I was. I know that I was the best player on Galoo. Trying to keep myself restrained back here. I'm gonna try to save myself with mine as well. Wow. 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 That's my only comment. Dry sockies. Hey, when will you keep the chopsticks? Oh. Yummy. Are you kidding me? Fun girls are used to be fun. Who do you like more, the military vet Shambo or the popular girl Laura? Comment below and let me know. Thank you for watching and doubly thanks for liking and subscribing. See you all next time.